opportunity to welcome our guests today. We have Miguel and Eliza. Eliza? Eliza, right? And of course, Griselda uh, and Richelle. Richelle, Richelle, sorry. Welcome, po. welcome to the BLA Peace of Fellowship. My name is uh, Ricardo Jumacchio. I'm the lead pastor of this church. And again, we welcome you all in this wonderful day of celebration. So uh, this morning, before we, we proceed, I'd like to lead us in prayer. So I'd like you all to stand. Let's, let's ask the uh, blessings of the Lord in this gathering as uh, we are about to, to start our service. Of course, everything that we do here must be surrendered unto the Lord, and that the Holy Spirit will lead us, the Holy Spirit will, uh, will uh, guide us, and the Holy Spirit will speak through to us through the Word, and, and all the things that we have planned for this day. So we pray, Father God, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we come to you with thanksgiving, we come to you with gratitude and adoration of who you are in our life, and thanking you, O oh God, Lord, for your blessings uh, all throughout the week, and today, O oh God, Lord, is the day of celebration, for this is the day that you have made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it, O oh God, Lord. Lord, we praise you. We magnify your name, and we glorify you, O oh God, Lord, for you are good and faithful and loving and merciful and gracious unto us, Lord. And today, Lord, is a day wherein we would like to lift up your name up, O oh God, Lord, that we will be singing praises, lifting up our hands, clapping our hands together, O oh God, as a family, O oh God, Lord in adoration of who you are, thanking you for what you've done, thanking you for what uh, your, uh, your faithfulness and your goodness and your grace and mercy upon us, O oh God, Lord. Holy Spirit, we ask you to, to speak to us through your word, O oh God, as uh, my son Daniel will be preaching God's word, and uh, Richie and her team will lead us in worship, asking you, Lord, that Holy Spirit will anoint, oh God, all of us, oh God, as we come in front of oh God, Lord, that People here today will hear you. People here today will experience you in a very powerful way. Even later on, as we will be dedicating uh, Sophia Grace uh, unto you, Jesus of God, we ask you, Holy Spirit, to, that even in that uh, event of God, in gathering of God, Lord, we ask you to lead us to all of God, Lord. And Lord, we commit you today. We give back all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Please be seated. So once again, welcome all of you. Uh, please find your seat. Those people at the back who are still seated, uh, standing, please find your seat. And uh, before uh, we call our worship, I'd like to lead you to our announcement. Um, January 11, uh, on Wednesday, this is a regular event in this church. We gathered together by, by a Zoom. And we, have, we call it midweek celebration as we... Uh, we will have uh, exhortation of God's word, we have uh, testimonies, we have worship, we have prayer. So it's a mini version of the Sunday gathering. So those of you who are able and free to join us on Wednesday evening starting from 7 p.m. And you usually uh, stop and at 9 o'clock. And um, through this gathering, we leave up the prayer requests of many and if you have any prayer requests, Please let us know, Pastor Mike, myself, or my wife, and we will definitely uh, live up your prayers unto the Lord. And uh, let me tell you that we've been experiencing a lot of miracles through, through that uh, uh, prayer group, and uh, we've been hearing a lot of testimonies. And uh, on the 15th Sunday assignment, okay, uh, Brother Arnel will be uh, delivering God's word, and Sister Grace, and and uh, maybe Shannon also will be leading us in worship, and uh, uh, to uh, opening prayer will to be to be to be announced. Okay, what else do we have? So uh, again, we would like to thank the Lord in your behalf for you. I mean, uh, for your faithful giving to through this ministry. That through your giving, to faithful giving. We are able to, to fund all the uh, ministries that we've been supporting in the Philippines also locally. There are so many feeding programs, many outreaches that we are helping out in the Philippines, and that is possible because of your uh, faithful giving. So there are three ways to give, either using Tightly, which is the common, uh, uh, common way. Uh, you just download it in your cell phone, 
and you can give online or you can still write a check. We have a drop box at uh, the Usher's table. And again, we thank the Lord for you, for your faithful giving. So please stay after the service for the dedication of Sophia Grace and of course lunch will be provided. Let's just join the family in, in the celebration of Sophia's life. Okay, that's it. And so later our uh, Sunday school will be proceeding to the room after the worship. And so uh, let's just lift them up unto the Lord. Father God, Lord, we lift up to our Sunday school kids, Lord. Again, as young as they are, Lord, but they have the hunger to know me more, God, Lord. And we thank you for the volunteers and teachers who are faithfully teaching them, O oh God, into the knowledge of your word, O oh God, Lord. As you have said in your word, O oh God, that uh, this them in the way that you should go, that they will not, when they grow old, they will not depart from it, O oh God, Lord. And Lord, we live up to you, our Sunday school kids, Lord, even the teachers and volunteers. And we ask you, the Holy Spirit, to lead us in worshiping you through our team, Sister Richie and, and the team, O oh God, and the band, O oh God, Lord. And again, we give you all glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's give the Lord a clap. Okay. The Holy Worship Team. Good morning. 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 More, more cheerful. Can you say praise the Lord? Praise, praise the Lord. There you go. Um, how's uh, 2023 uh, so treating you so far? For good. one week. Blessed? Okay. If you're like me, I always look back of a year before and then within the week of, of the first uh, year, I only say, okay, what did the Lord did to me? And then look back to it. Now, whether it is challenges, whether it is something that uh, I don't know what had happened, I always look back and I encourage you uh, with the encouragement that the Lord has given me. Uh, the thing that uh, really uh, the Lord impressed on me on uh, for today is to encourage the church to open your heart um, to dedicate yourself again, and it's nothing that uh, that your 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 uh, salvation has lost. It's not like that. But what I wanted to encourage you is dedicate yourself to the Lord. Go back to who you are. And so I would like to read this for you. When your faith seeds are in the ground and the harvest is yet to come, may you use the time in between to care for your soul and know Jesus more. Are you weary? Give priority to rest. Are you delusioned? Take some time in God's presence and let Him renew your perspective. Do you feel beat up by life? Draw near to Jesus as He can restore you. Don't forget who you are in this season of your life. You're loved, treasured, cold, and appointed. God has not lost your address. He knows where you live. I might not know where you live, but he knows. And at just the right time, he will break through. So be courageous today. Habakkuk 2.14 says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Sorry, it's wrong. It's Romans 10.13. Are you listening? <laughs> Nobody even knows that. So Romans 10.13 says, Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Habakkuk 2.14 says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters covers the sea.
will be partaking communion in a few seconds. We just celebrated Christmas and I'm sure all of us, or at least most of us, gathered together as a family. We prepared some food, drinks, dessert, and we call on our family and maybe invited some more friends just to be with us. In the partaking of that feast, the Philippine culture, we call it Noche Pena. What, what that all of, what that all about is that that celebration, the gathering, the food that we share together as a family, is a celebration of the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I'm sure there's no doubt about that. That. We all know why Jesus came. Christmas gathering is only once a year. And like I said, that's the, to commemorate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. But here in this church and many other churches celebrate communion every now and then. For many churches like us, we celebrate communion the first Sunday of the month. What do we celebrate? Christmas, we celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ, but when we partake communion, we celebrate the whole enchilada. We celebrate Jesus, the birth of Jesus Christ. We celebrate His death. And we also celebrate this resurrection. And you know what? We are also celebrating His return. We're looking forward for His return. That's the whole story of God's glory here on earth when He came here more than 2,000 years ago. So brothers and sisters, you are holding right now this element. I said this is just element which means this is just symbolism this is representation of the sacrifices of the Lord Jesus Christ more than 2,000 years ago on the cross of Calvary as you will be opening it I would like you to open it gently so you don't want to spill your the juice on your shirt the first layer you will get the wafer piece of bread Mine is not pastor friendly. Okay. You have a piece of bread, this wafer. And as I've said, this is an element. This is a symbolism of the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. What does it symbolize, brothers and sisters? Jesus Christ's body was broken. Upon his body, he received the punishment that you and I deserve. Punishment for what? Punishment for a sin. For the wages of sin is death. That's what the Bible says. Wages of sin is death. Ang kabayaran daw ng kasalanan yung kamatayan. Is it physical death? No. Spiritual death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ came. He suffered death. He suffered all the pain and agony on that cross. So that you and I will no longer suffer the penalty for our sin. And that's what communion is all about, brothers and sisters. You're holding this piece of bread that symbolizes the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ was gathered around his disciples in the upper room, he took bread 
and broke it. After giving thanks, he took bread and gave it to his disciples and said, This is my body which was broken for you. Do this in the remembrance of me. And that's why you and I are remembering. When we partake this bread, we are remembering the sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are remembering His sacrifice. We are remembering that because of Jesus Christ, we will no longer face the penalty for our sin. He said, do this in remembrance of me. In remembrance of me. This is what communion is all about. Father God, Lord, thank you for your Son, Jesus Christ, whom you have sent to bear the penalty of our sins upon him, O God, Lord. And Lord, he gave it all. He gave it all. And Lord, today, as we will be partaking this bread, I pray, O God, Lord, that we will not just partake it without any meaning at all, but Lord, we are partaking it in gratitude and acknowledgement that indeed you came for us to die on that cross so that we can be saved, we can be redeemed. Let's partake this bread together. On the same manner, after supper, Jesus took the cup and gave it to Sabbath and said, This is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Drink from this in remembrance of me. There you go, folks. In remembrance of me. What are we remembering again? Death. And death of the Lord Jesus. Not only that, He did not just die. He shed His precious blood. Which means, because of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, we've been set free. We've been redeemed. We've been cleansed. We've been purified. And those of you, those of us, who accepted Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord, guess what? When God the Father looks at you, He sees you as pure. He sees you as sinless. He sees you as redeemed. He sees you as a child. Okay. Father God, thank you for the shed blood on the cross of God, Lord. And today, as we are about to partake, this cup, this, this represents the blood of Jesus Christ. We thank you and we praise you for what you've done. Now that we are redeemed, oh God, we would like to thank you and praise you for what you've done on the cross. Let's partake this cup together.
Before I release the worship team, let me just ask you this question. What are you fearful about today? Are you anxious of the year 2023? Maybe you have some health issues, financial problems, relationship problems. That can give you a lot of pain and sorrow and worry and fear. But the song that we just sang said, never 
you will walk alone. Never that let God will let you be on your own. But the thing is, you need to invite Jesus who is offering you to be with you. Whatever your situation you're in right now, whatever your fear is all about, whatever things that give you anxiety, pain, suffering, Jesus is offering you His life. He said, you will never walk alone. That's His offer. And He meant it, and He will do it. So today, I would like to uh, ask the worship team to sing just a couple of times. Never, never you will walk alone. Just reflect on that promise. This is not an empty promise. This is coming from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ. Telling you, you will never, never be alone. If you will receive me as your Savior. I like to ask This morning, just two people. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, uh, let's, I, I, since we have a little event happening after, let's we'll go straight into it. Um, uh, and so, if you go, if you want to go to Lamentations chapter three, verse nineteen through twenty-four, say Amen when you're there. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 19 through 24.
And if you're taking notes, you can you can title it "Strength for Today and Bright Hope for Tomorrow." Everyone there? Amen. Lamentations chapter three, verse nineteen through twenty-four. So, before we read through it, I ask Oz a question. Raise your hand if you know what burnout is. Being burnt out. Yes. Yeah. Raise your hand if you've ever felt burnt out. Yes. Yeah. I, I think we all have at some point. And if you don't know what it is, burnout is your breaking point, right? After all the pressure, stress, and struggles, you just don't have enough energy to continue, right? Uh, like, think about the most stressful day of work you had, right? Um, you just push through it to get through the day, but at the end of the day, you're just burnt out. No energy, no drive to do anything. And when you think of the next day, it just gives you more stress and anxiety about the next day. Right? That's, that's burnout, right? So when we read through uh, Lamentations chapter 3, let's remember that word or that phrase, burnout. Because I think uh, burnout is an accurate description of how Israel was feeling at this point, right? So just a little context before we read, right? Lamentation says to be written by the prophet Jeremiah, and the purpose behind the book is actually in the name itself, right? Lamentation's root word, lament, right? Lamentation's is a lament, uh, a lament being a passionate expression of grief and sorrow, right? So there's going to be a lot of sad imagery and hopelessness in this book, right? What is Jeremiah lamenting? What, what it was Lamentations lamenting? It's the destruction of Jerusalem by the hands of Babylonians about 580 BC, right? This was, Jerusalem was their promise that this is the land that they called home, the home of their people, right? To Israel, this was a symbol of pro the promises of God to be true, right? God took Israel out of Egypt and brought them to salvation through Jerusalem, right? So imagine losing that, that symbol, right? So you can understand all that pain. You can understand that Israel might be feeling burnt out, feeling like tomorrow is not worth it. They don't have the energy anymore, no drive, when thinking the next day is just going to be just as painful and stressful, right? But in the middle of lamentations, in the middle of all of this lamenting, in the middle of all this pain and suffering, we get the beautiful words of hope, mercy, and grace in Lamentations chapter 3, verses 19 through 24. So I'll read through that real quick. I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I say to myself, the Lord is my portion, therefore I will wait for him. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, thank you for this morning. Uh, and thank you for the book of Lamentations, where we can lament a grief. Uh, thank you that you allow us to express our grief to you, our sorrows to you, Lord God. I pray that through this, we may hear your word and be transformed by your word. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. So what I want to do is kind of go through the verse line by line. But before that, we kind of have to understand the pain and suffering Israel is going through, right? So if we go back to verse 1 of the whole chapter... Jeremiah says, I am the man who has seen affliction by the, the rod of the Lord's wrath, right? Key word here that I want to point out is the Lord's wrath. And I always found that saying very interesting, the Lord's wrath. I mean, you know, we, we all grew up knowing God as love, God as grace, all these nice words with God. But wrath was an interesting one, right? And here it is in the Bible, like the wrath of God. And to add on that, Jeremiah is saying the pain and the suffering he is experiencing is by the rod of the Lord's wrath. Meaning, is his pain from God? 
How can that be right? He says, he has driven me away into darkness. He has turned his hand against me. He made my skin and flesh grow old. He drew his bow at me and targeted me. And we know that he, the he Jeremiah is talking about is God here because it's all capitalized, right? So how do we accept this? How do we understand this? Is God giving pain and suffering to Jeremiah, to Israel? Does that sound right? I think we need to keep reading further to help us understand this. In verse 32 to 33, though he brings grief, he will bring compassion, for he does not willingly bring grief and affliction to anyone. Right there, it says God does not willingly bring us pain, but rather, I'd say that God uses pain and suffering, right? Pain and suffering is always going to be in our world. God's creation was perfect, but sin tainted it, right? Therefore, pain and suffering will always exist in our world. God didn't bring it here, but it's there because of sin. And obviously, that's what the enemy wants. The enemy wants you to suffer. He wants you to have pain. But God uses that for his, greatest, for his greater purpose, right? In Job 36, it says, God delivers the afflicted through their afflictions and opens their ear by adversity. Right? The idea of God using pain and suffering is all throughout the Bible, right? It's the idea of pruning, right? Pruning a plant, right? God is the perfect gardener who prunes the branches to give room for new life, right? And pruning is a painful act. It's the act of ripping off parts of who you are, right? And remember, a good gardener doesn't just prune bad things but even the, sometimes the good things, and what, or what may seem like good things to you, right? God uses our painful pruning moments to mold us and shape us and to make room for the new growth he has in store for us, amen? And we also have to note back in 30, verse 32, he says, though he brings grief, he brings compassion, right? He brings grace, he brings love, that's the greater purpose. It's supposed to make us lean on God's love, lean on his compassion, lean on his grace, lean on his strength, lean on his mercy. Right in Psalms 19, it says, before when I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. It also says, it is good I was afflicted so that I may learn your statutes. Right, that's the greater purpose that God uses pain and suffering for. Affliction draws us closer to God because it makes us see the, bro the broken world right it makes us see that God's creation is tainted and the creation is groaning for redemption right now that we understand that pain and suffering does not come from God but that God uses it for his greater purpose we can go through the verse line by line and I think each line is a reassurance re re uh, I can't say the word I don't, I don't know reassurance there we go reassurance of hope and why we can stay hopeful in seasons of trials and pain right verses 21 to 22 yet this I call to mind and therefore I have hope because of his great love we are never consumed for his compassions never fail right in our seasons of pain and suffering we have to recall Right? Key word here is recall the goodness of God, right? Remembering is important in the Christian walk. It's actually a command from God, right? He says to do this in remembrance of me. When we take communion, we're told to do it in remembrance, to remember the goodness of God. In seasons of pain, we are supposed to recall the goodness of the Bible that so the goodness of God that's throughout the Bible, we remember he's the creator God who created the heavens and earth. We remember that he's the God who took his people out of his slavery. We remember that he's the God who came down to earth to be the lamb, to be the high priest that bridges our divide. We remember that he's the God who died and rose again. Right? And not just in the Bible, we, in seasons of pain, we also recall the goodness of God that he's displayed in your life. Right? 
We remember that he's the God who provides for you and your family. We remember he's the God who puts a roof over you. We remember he's the God who loves you unconditionally. Right? In our seasons of pain and affliction, if we remember the goodness of God, we will surely not be consumed right, by our pain and suffering because we know God is unfailing. He has showed us time and time again through the Bible and in our lives. Amen? No amens amen to that? Amen. Are we listening? Yeah, there we go. Verse 23, God's compassion, mercy, and strength is new every morning. Right? Verse 23, I really like this verse. And if you deep dive deeper into it, we can unpack a lot from it. On the surface, right, it tells us that God gives us strength to get through the day, right? Even in our seasons of pain and suffering. But let's reread that in a different way. There's actually um, at the hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, which is written based on this passage. The hymn says, morning by morning, new mercies I see, right? And then later on it says, strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. The title of my teaching, right? New mercies every morning, keyword new, right? I don't have to rely on yesterday's mercies and strengths because those were for yesterday. I can rely on the strength that God has tailor made for me specifically for this day. Right? Think of it like clothes. Imagine you get to have a brand new outfit every day and it's freshly pressed and it's perfect for whatever you have for the day. You don't have to wear yesterday's clothes because that was for yesterday. Today's clothes are for what you have planned for today. And that's how God works. He outfits you with the strength and mercies perfect for whatever you'll be encountering today. And what that tells me is that his God is overflowing with mercies and strength and compassion. We don't have to reuse old clothes from yesterday. God's got mercy and strength for us. For days on days on days on days. Amen. Time is infinity. This also tells me that God is in control. The strength and mercy he gives to me is tailor-made specifically for me, for you. It's tailor-made specifically for what you're going to struggle with that day. Because he is all-knowing. He's all-powerful. Amen? Amen? And that's why when we're burnt out at the end of one day, and we're thinking about the next day, we can have hope for tomorrow because God's going to give us a new outfit of strength and mercies and compassion to face tomorrow. Amen? Amen. Verse 23. Uh, the rest of verse 23, actually, it says, Great is thy faithfulness. Great is your faithfulness. Do you know the, the Hebrew word for faithfulness is imuna? which means firmness and steadiness. So let's read verse 23 again. Great is thy imuna. Great is thy firmness. Great is thy steadiness. Great is thy foundation. Amen? Let me say that again. Great is your foundation. When we talk about God's faithfulness, we are talking about how firm and steady God is. He is unwavering. His promises are true. What he says comes to pass. Amen. So when we're in seasons of pain and suffering and lament, we can have hope for tomorrow because our firm foundation is in the creator himself. Our firm foundation is unwavering and true. Amen. And the last verse, 24, is the last reassurance of hope. The Lord is my portion. Right? The Lord is my portion. And the Hebrew word for portion is chaylek. They say that chaylek. I like saying that word. Chaylek. With a ch. <laughs> Which I think is better translated to my inheritance. 
when I reached this part of this message, it made me think of the, the, the time I bought my first home, right? If any of you are keeping up with the housing market in the last few years, it's kind of hard to buy a home, right? <laughs> um, interest rates and inflation, I don't know how my generation is gonna get in the housing market. And I'm naturally an anxious person, right? I always, I always think of the worst situation. And even when it comes to money, I never feel like I have enough to survive. Um, so imagine me buying my first home, I was stressed. Thankfully, my parents were able to help me out, right? They sold their home and split up mine and my brother's inheritance and gave it to us early to bless us, our individual families now. And I'm thankful for that. Because of that inheritance, the process of buying my first home was successful, hopeful, and less stressful, right? Now imagine how much more confident and hopeful can we be knowing as children of God we have our inheritance in Christ. Amen? Our inheritance in Christ is not money. It's not a house. It's not cars. It's not the business. But as it says in Ephesians 1, our inheritance in Christ is when we heard the word of truth, the gospel of salvation, and believed in him. It was sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our inheritance is our redemption and salvation in Christ Jesus. Knowing that we are redeemed, how can we not be hopeful for tomorrow? Right? So I want to go over this one more time before I end. Maybe we're feeling right now you're in your own lament, in your own lamentation. Maybe everything is a lament to you right now. And then and I mentioned in my previous preaching before, maybe you're in your own season of advent, meaning waiting, right? Cling on to these reassurances of hope. God did not give you these afflictions, but he's using it for his greater purpose in you. Amen? Remember the goodness of God in the Bible and in your life. It's a command, actually, right? Recalling and remembering gives us hope. Don't rely on yesterday's strengths, but allow God to dress you in new outfits of strength and mercies today. Make your firm foundation in God who is unwavering and true. And last is have hope because you are a child of God who is the perfect parent. He will never leave you or forsake you. And have hope that your inheritance is in Christ. You are saved, you are redeemed, you are loved. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we love you, Lord God. And we thank you that we can come to you in lament, in grief, and in sorrow, and have hope that you give us strength for today, and you are a bright hope for tomorrow, because you outfit us with strength for every day. God, I pray for those maybe who are struggling today, and that these words would penetrate our lives and give us hope, because we are children of God. You give us inheritance. You are redeemed. We are saved. We are loved. Unconditional. I thank you, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Daniel. What a wonderful, powerful message. Amen. I'd like to take this opportunity as well. I just don't want to pass this opportunity without having an application for what we have heard today. What is your take on this message? How did God speak to you through this message? It's very clear that you and I can face lamentations of many, through many forms. Could be a physical lamentation, financial lamentation, relational lamentation, worries, fear, anxiety. And those are realities of life. 
We cannot avoid it. It's all around us. You see, even the COVID-19 that we have, it's not even going away. We heard that there, there's new variant going around. When will this end? Economically, where will we be? Like my son Daniel said, how could we afford to buy a house this day? Those are things that can give you lamentation, sorrow, grief, anxiety. But there's hope. There's hope in God. Daniel said, build up your foundation in God. He said, because you are children of God. And the question that I had to ask you this morning, are you a child of God? How sure you are that you are a child of God? The only way for us to have and be assured of our relationship with God through His Son is by accepting His Son. We had communion earlier and I said that He came here on earth to die on the cross of Calvary. Guess who he died for? For you and for me. But it's not enough, friends, to know that Jesus Christ died for you and for me. But what matters the most is, are you accepting, are you believing in what he has done for you? Are you receiving him? Are you surrendering your life to Jesus Christ? If you don't, then whatever you've heard today meant nothing. If you don't have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ, his death on the cross meant nothing for you. And so today, like I said, I'd like to give you an opportunity for those of you who don't have yet a personal relationship with Jesus Christ. I don't know your struggles. I don't know your story. But God knows. And it's not an accident that you are here. It's not an accident you are hearing this message. God meant you to be here. So, today, Jesus Christ is offering himself to you. Specifically to you. He's speaking to your heart. He's knocking at the door of your heart this morning. If you would like to receive Jesus Christ, I'm not telling you to be a member of this church. I'm not telling you to attend this church. No, I'm not telling you that. What I'm telling you is that Jesus Christ is offering you a brand new relationship. A relationship with the Son Jesus Christ. Receiving Him as Savior and Lord will lead you to a new life because he's offering you life. Jesus said in John 14, 6 says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That's the very word of Jesus Christ. And if you would like to receive Jesus Christ, just follow this simple prayer of surrender. Father God, Lord, in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, I come to you humbly, asking you to forgive me from all of my sin. I'm sorry, Lord, that all these years I've been living my life far and away from you. But today, I'm surrendering my life to you, receiving you as my Savior and my Lord. Come into my heart now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord that clap offering. Well, as uh, our uh, team is preparing the food at the back, uh, like I said, today is a special gathering. Let me just grab my...